Hi, I'm Mark Trousdale here with Finextra TV, and I'm speaking with Joe Bonanno from City. Joe, can you tell us a bit about your role, what you do at City, and also a fun fact not related to your profession? Ah, got me there. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, my name is Joe Bonanno. I lead uh, City Wealth's uh, data analytics and innovation. Uh, that would be sort of all things cloud, AI, and innovation efforts across the board. Fun fact: uh, I have a I have two kids that have the exact same birthday, five years apart. Uh, it was a bit tough when one was 21 and one was 16, because those are big years, but uh, not too many folks have that. So. Amazing timing. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about what data analytics and innovation means to you, especially in your role at City Wealth? Sure, I think, look, I think data, start, we'll start with data, and I think that's kind of the foundation of all things. Uh, it's the lifeblood of most organizations. Um, and it's how we really power our advisors as well as our client experience. And to me, that's the most important. Uh, and on the data side, it's really about setting up data foundations that can scale globally across the world uh, and organizing all of our client data, our security data, our transactions, if you will, as well as client behaviors and DNA. Um, I think on the analytics side, it's really about like, all right, how do we measure the efficacy of certain things that we're doing with our clients, with our advisors, what's working, what's not working, uh, which clients look like they might benefit from a particular product or, you know, of the advisors bringing in, you know, sort of clients, you know, what do they look like? What are their attributes? What are their behaviors? So more of a data science kind of function. On the innovation side, it's really about like, all right, I don't really care about 2.0, like, which is like everybody's like, get to the next level. I'm already at 3.0, uh, where like I want to empower our advisors with information at their fingertips. And if you think about like AI and where it's going, it's how do I sort of give them like co-pilots to some extent to be their sidekick and their assistants. So on the innovation side, it's all about scaling AI to solve uh, problems that they're having to optimize their day, uh, but also really uh, making our operations and service teams to go a bit faster by having information at their fingertips. That makes sense. Um, and so you mentioned AI uh, taking it to the next level. Do you see, how do you see kind of attitudes to that? Are people excited? Um, how are you leveraging AI to, to further that mission? Yeah, I mean, there's absolutely a, a buzz for sure. Um, and we have great partnerships with folks like Google and others that also make it more uh, fun to, to work with. Um, but I do think like there, there's always like a sort of like, hey, is this replacing my job? Uh, and honestly, I think like my view is like, just like the industrial revolution, like Things will happen, but then, like I think, even in college, I've heard that like kids today uh, who graduate soon, like their next five jobs, their careers, three of them don't even exist today. And I think through AI and things like that, uh, we're going to see new things. But I think for folks internally, the things that we're doing and we're introducing at a velocity that I personally haven't seen in my career uh, are getting them excited because they can see and touch these tools. And we all have you know, ChatGPT and, and other tools in our pockets to do on our personal lives. And now it's how, how do we bring those capabilities to the forefront to, to this business? And I think people, with the use cases we have, they really get it. Uh, and we're starting pretty fast, but getting like momentum behind us. No, it makes sense. Um, and, and speaking of use cases, are there particular use cases, whatever you can talk about, that are particu particularly well suited for AI that you're finding in either a you know, uh, colleague enablement sense or from sure. an, a reaching the end client sense? Yeah, I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, so look, a lot of times, especially in a global organization like ours, getting information quickly is sometimes hard to find. Uh, and especially if you're a service agent that supports a global uh, kind of client set, uh, how do you know how to process, uh, you know, this death benefit in this country and it might be different in this way or you know, how do I wire funds to Hong Kong and what's the protocols and all these things. A lot of these documents historically have been buried or not centralized. Um, but to be honest with you, uh, also just waiting on the person or being dependent on someone is not fun. Uh, so literally with basic RAG models, which is like retrieval augmented generation, uh, you can effectively put a large language model on top and just type in some questions. And basically, it's pointed just to those documents. So it's not going to also hallucinate. Um, but I can just ask the question, and it's going to say step one, step two, step three, step four. Um, if you take that further to the client, uh, the financial advisors that we have, there's a lot going on in the market constantly, right? No one has a crystal ball. Um, but they're often wondering, you know, which of my clients' asset allocation is off track? 
which of my clients are exposed to NVIDIA, uh, which of my clients look like they might need a financial plan, and oh, by the way, haven't I called in the last 30 days? Um, so again, having good data underneath will support that type of uh, sort of large language model. Uh, and then there's always like the research stuff, like what do we think about gold? What's the outlook of the S&P or this market? Um, what's the price target of IBM? Uh, which of the following uh, stocks in my, you know, who has a heavy concentrated position? And oh, by the way, who holds IBM and what's its price target? Like you can, you can bring all this together. And I would think of that as traditional just pull and surface. But then you get more advanced with really trying to optimize people's day. So today we have financial advisors that make calls. And unfortunately, after a call, and this is most businesses, so it's not just you know, uh, restricted to us. Uh, after a conversation, you log your notes. You sort of say, hey, here's what we talked about. Um, but that takes like 20 minutes out of your day. And sometimes you have back-to-back -back calls. So you might even miss some of the notes that you, you know, probably should have took right after the call. But you can't, right, because you have back-to-back -back meetings. Uh, so we're using even AI to basically take the entire conversation, transcribe it, number one, and then summarize it. And then you can even intelligently figure out what's the intent of the call. Is this a portfolio annual review? Is this a one-time like investment call? Is this a personal call? You name it. And based on that intent, you can even structure the output of that summary in what we call different schemas. Uh, but you could effectively, after the call, like within seconds, show the advisor, here's the summary, so you don't have to take the notes. They can edit it if they'd like. They can push a button and inject it right into their note-taking system instantly. At the same time, they can push a button and send it out to their client with, hey, here's what we just talked about. And the client's like, how'd they do that in 30 seconds? But think about that data that just took place in that conversation. That also becomes a tremendous amount of knowledge and, and sort of information for, for a next best action for that client. So if I string together the last 10 conversations I had, along with their you know, holdings, positions, balances, performance, and these things. Um, before I get into a meeting with you, if you're my client, I could say, can you prep the next summary based on the last four conversations or five conversations along with all this other data? And instantly they have this sort of prep deck, right? So that's another example. But there's tons that we're focused on right now, and all of these uh, you know, in, in years past would take a long, long time. And now with LLMs, I think we're moving at a pace. Uh, I, the harder part is the legal risk compliance side, to be honest <laughs> with you. Well, to that point, uh, I know, I mean, you mentioned having the right data or knowledge base curated and, and sort of containing what the LLMs pointed to, which I, I agree is crucial. Uh, has has City looked at all, because there's more being published now on not just generative AI using LLMs, but also layering with more deterministic models, classical algorithms. Um, have you found that uh, leveraging some of those techniques helps at least um, minimize the concerns that legal and risk would have? I think so. I think, you know, our, our, one, of, one of the challenges is privacy and, and things like that, which is outside of sort of what you suggested, um, because it's like, in what country are you doing sort of what and who's got access to this data? So there's a bit of that. Uh, but you can anonymize things and use hashtags and keys and honestly, it's sometimes even more secure, quite honestly, than sort of having a data center somewhere or wherever. Um, but I think organizing your data is the first step. Um, and then traditional data science, you know, like predictive models or deterministic, these are just like fact-based things. And then there's probability. Um, but LLMs is like word association, so it's kind of a combination of all. Um, but to, honestly, you got to anchor yourself in a pretty structured data model that has organized data. It also has to have good data quality rules and controls um, because that's paramount to everything else coming out with the right output. Um, hallucination, I'll be honest with you, that was a big kind of fear like when AI was the buzz maybe a year ago. But to be honest, with techniques like RAG where it's pointed to a specific confined data set, like, and, and you sort of explain to people, it's if you ask like, a question about the world or something, it's not we're not using that model that's trained on that. We're restricted to this data model and this database along with these documents. So it's not gonna go off and query something. There are certain, you know, you could open it up to like the internet and things like that, but we're sort of restricting it to our data as well as, you know, our sort of uh, files, if you will. Mm -hmm. it makes sense. Well, that's, that's exciting progress, obviously. Um, what, what does the future look like for City Wealth? Look, I think uh, I came to be not 
not uh, second or third, I often say this, but uh, honestly, we're, we're going to game change this whole place, like to be honest with you, the industry as well. Um, I can tell you we have a team that we've built that uh, is honestly here every day relentlessly to be the best. Uh, but it starts with the culture and the leadership at the top. So I think, you know, at Jane Fraser's level, like she's been extremely passionate about embracing these tools and capabilities. I think Andy C. who leads our wealth management division, is like kid in a candy store with this stuff and honestly a big uh, supporter and honestly comes up with ideas like as a leader that even sometimes my team's not thinking of because I think he sees like the art of the possible. Um, but for us, it's really about like our clients and giving them the best experience uh, that's lightning quick and being able to understand like their behaviors to almost like foresee sort of their next best action uh, and be able to even surface that to our financial advisors with a click of a button and then also be able to craft messages that are tailored and authentic and personalized to them. Um, I could have 400 clients as a financial advisor and there could be multiple things happening in someone's portfolio. Uh, and if you think about a family, that might be 10, 20 accounts alone. Uh, but to know there's an upgrade, a downgrade, a price target change, a bond maturing, a birthday, or this or that, uh, being able to distill that and sort of say, even in rank order, one, two, three, and then, hey, Joe, the Facebook you own valued at X was downgraded. Give me a call if you want to talk about it. Pushing a button and sending it out to all 400 that hold Facebook uh, is almost like a, a personalized. You, you'll never be able to do that as a traditional human. Uh, but I think to me, it's about scaling our practice for our advisors, giving the best client experience, and being relentless about being number one. Well, the passion is obvious, Joe. Thank you for sitting down with us today. Thanks, Mark, for having me. I appreciate being here.